Hello, and welcome to the Breakaway Entrepreneur Podcast, where we explore the entrepreneur mindset and the characteristics and traits that lead to success. I'm your host, Janet Fish, and in this episode, I talk with Michelle Abraham. While I enjoy all my interviews, this one was special because as a podcaster myself, I got to ask an expert the questions that I was curious about. Michelle is an international speaker, podcast host, and podcast producer. Michelle was just voted number 16 of the top 50 moms in podcasting by Podcast Magazine. She is the founder of Amplify You. Kevin Harrington, the original shark on the TV hit show Shark Tank, says Amplify You is North America's top podcast management company. Michelle and her team have launched well over 100 podcasts in the last 12 months and manages over 50 weekly shows. If you're an entrepreneur who is thinking about launching a podcast, or if you already have a podcast and want some great insights on how to improve your reach, you'll want to listen. So I hope you enjoy our chat. Welcome, Michelle, to the podcast. I'm so excited to have you. I got to go on to yours a couple of weeks ago, and it was really fun. And so I get to explore you this time instead of you exploring me. So I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, it's so awesome. Yeah. I loved our interview together on my show. It ended up being so funny. It was one of my favorite ones we've done. It was fun. So I will post a link to that in the show notes. So anybody who wants to listen to that can, can get another dose of you and I doing what we do. So, um, yeah. so let's just start out with telling us a little bit about you, um, who you are, what you do, and kind of tell us some of the unique things about where you live, because I think that's so cool. Sure. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Janet, for having me here. It's so great to be here on your show. Um, so my name is Michelle Abraham, and I am a podcast producer. Um, I have a company called Amplify You, where we help uh, podcast podcasters get their show out there in the world. Um, usually our clients are authors, coaches, speakers who have a big mission and a big heart and they want to make a big impact in the world. And so we help them stay in their zone of, con of content creation, zone of genius, while we take care of all the technology and all the rest. So we hold your hand, we'll walk you through launching a show and then managing your show on a regular basis. And uh, I just love doing that. And we're able to do that because I live completely off the grid, which is very unusual, like you're saying. So we're completely 100% off the grid. We live, we have to take a boat to our house where we live on a lake uh, on the Sunshine Coast of BC. And um, I drive my kids to school by boat. <laughs> so they drive them to the school bus and the school bus picks them up on the side of the lake and then they off they go to school. So kind of a unique living experience. But because of podcasting, we were able to have this lifestyle. My husband was able to quit his job of 18 years and we were able to um, live where we do. So it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, cool. That's so excellent. That's great. So how long have you been helping podcasters? Um, and then tell a little bit how you do it. Yeah, absolutely. So we've been, uh, so I've been working in the podcasting space since 2012. And actually what's really funny, Jen, is this morning I was on an into, I was on an interview this morning on a podcast where it was my podcast mentor who, when back in 2012, I had a co-working space in Vancouver. We were the first co-working space outside of the downtown Vancouver area. And so we had a nice meeting space and a lot of education went on there. And so we'd invite people in to do workshops and we, uh, I was really passionate about podcasting and everyone's like, what the heck's podcasting? What are you talking about? And so I found, I went on a hunt to find someone who knew anything about podcasting in our area. And sure enough, I found this guy named Scott and Scott, it was amazing. He is a podologist, he calls himself. And so he came and started speaking at my meetup group for podcasting. I learned tons from him. And so I got to be on his podcast this morning. And he's had his show for 15 years. <laughs> Can you imagine? And I use Scott as an example in a lot of shows that I um, I go on because he he was something he said to me he always stuck with me and is that he had a podcast uh, back in 2000 or 2001 about weight loss. And all the way back in 2012, he was that was 12 years after that show had been live, and he was still getting people um, saying how much they changed his life. I thought, wow, 12 years that show has been live for. And he's still getting people commenting because it doesn't go away. It stays there forever. <laughs> and I think that's what I really like about podcasting. And so now we help people launch their shows, help them create their ideas, strategize about the best positioning for them in their show to create themselves as an expert. 
and we help you monetize your show as well. So lots of different things that we do, but we really specialize in the ongoing podcast management on a weekly basis for you so that you cannot get bogged down with all the details of the podcast. Because as you know, Janet, there's a lot that goes into it other than just the recording. <laughs> there's the, all the editing and all the marketing and all the graphics and eh, oh gosh, so much stuff. So we help people and we take care of that for them. And so they can go out there in the world and do what they do best. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So what would you, what would you say to somebody who said, cause I hear it a lot. I mean, I talk to entrepreneurs all the time. That's my, uh, that's, those are my people and they're curious as to why I started a podcast. And then I say, well, should I start a podcast? Mm -hmm. So I, I know, so I'm what, eight months into my podcast. I know pretty well what it takes to produce and create a podcast. Um, but what would you tell somebody who was thinking about, hey, I'm thinking about launching a podcast. What are the pros, cons? What are the realities of it? What would your advice be? Yeah, those are good questions. You know, I really, I really love talking about this because entrepreneur podcasters are completely different than what you're hearing about the rest of the podcasting industry. Because the other rest of the industry, you have to remember, they're out there, they're entertaining, they're talking about sports, they're comedy shows, they're all sorts of different kinds of shows that are out there wanting to get ads and sponsorship and um, monetization by like Patreon, a donation kind of platform. That's their thing and that's how they're going to monetize their show. But for entrepreneurs, they have a completely different perspective where actually for us to monetize our show would mean having a return coming back into our business from our podcast. So using our podcast as a lead generator, expert positioning, I think, and a networking tool, it's one of my favorite things to do. And so while everyone over in the rest of the podcast space is chasing the hundreds of thousands of downloads, um, for the most of us, if we had 10,000 new leads in our business, it would probably put us out of business pretty quick. So what we're after is a little bit different. What we are after is relationships. And we're after people getting to know, like, and trust us from our shows. We're out there to uh, expand our network by reaching out and interviewing other people, bringing them into our world, introducing them to our audience. We are also after um, the relationships of, like, you know, those uh, those thousand downloads instead of, um, those thousand downloads just being a number out there. So what I think is different about the entrepreneurs out there is we have a different kind of um, need from our podcast and also a different way of looking at podcasting, which I think, would you agree? That's kind of how, how you've used your podcast as well. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. The thing that, and I might've mentioned this when we were talking in our last um, conversation, the thing, one of the big things that really resonated with me and switched for me was my goal was to increase my audience, increase my reach. So that's pretty obvious. Everyone's trying to do that, whether they're sending out postcards via the mail or doing online things. But the thing that really got me was I have been, uh, I had blogged for years. Mm -hmm. So I had been an active blogger and I'd done that. And I was just at the point where I just couldn't do that anymore. Um, but one of the, so then I went and did some research. And so you spent hours because there's a lot out there, which is why I'm glad we're having that conversation because I want to hone in more on what you do and what makes you guys special. But there's a ton of people out there and a ton of information about mm -hmm. podcasting. But the thing that got me was one of the guys said, um, people who listen to podcasts are very, are, are completely different audience than people who read blogs. And, and I'm sure there's some overlap, but they're a completely different audience. And I didn't really get that. And then the thing that really got me was people who listen to podcasts, they hear your voice and, and they get you. I mean, there's a much bigger connection when you're listening to somebody's conversation than there is from just reading their blogs. And so that really resonated to me because one is you're reaching a market that is very different. And two, you're reaching, and then you're reaching them. I mean, we, we'll, we'll talk for 45 minutes or an hour, however long these, these, uh, the interviews go. That's way different than reading a five minute blog post. Mm -hmm. And so that really, um, that really got me as to the reach of a podcast that's very different. And I had no idea how much fun this was going to be. I mean, I thought, okay, it's another marketing tool that I'll do that I get to meet really cool people like you. I'm working on that book idea or that article idea. I'm still got that. I had, I did an outline and last weekend I was writing it. So more to come on that. Um, so there's a lot of people, like I said, there's a lot of people out there who do what you do, or there are a lot of people out who help 
um, people launch and then people who do production kind of what makes you different than the other ones out there because I know you're super special and I know you've been doing it a long time and I know you got a long history of great happy clients um, but what makes you guys different than anybody else that's out there doing that kind of stuff yeah, that's a great question. You know, there's lots of accolades I can tell you, like just got nominated as Entrepreneur of the Year Award so this that. year. You know, we were top 50, uh, I was the top number 16 out of the fifth, top 50 mom podcasters by Podcast Magazine. Um, I just, like, you know, Kevin Harrington says our podcast company is top, North America's top podcast management company. So those are some things that we have some great social credibility. But outside of that, I think what's different is that we really understand our our clients. So we understand the entrepreneurs and what they need from a podcast and what they want from a podcast. And you're absolutely correct where, you know, podcast listeners are so valuable. So right now we live in a, a time of attention and time and attention is our best commodity, right? So um, what the, we found is that, um, you know, listening um, to podcasts, podcasters are going to listen to podcast listeners are going to listen to about 20 minutes of your show on average. And you know what? They, you can't even get close to that on YouTube. It's four minutes and two seconds on Instagram and Facebook. It's like 18 seconds and four seconds. It's a very minimal amount of time. So what's great about podcasting and why one of the reasons I love it is that you know, it's not interruption marketing. So you're not interrupting them. You're inviting them to come along and listen to your show, no matter what they're doing. So they're out walking the dog, they're enjoying their life. They're um, having, you know, cooking dinner, working out of the gym. So whatever they're doing, whatever the listener is doing is really great because you're just fitting in and you're able, they're able to absorb and understand and, and you're, you have their attention for so much longer, which is incredible. So that's one thing that I think is really different about podcasting and especially for the entrepreneurs. Um, and like you said, um, there's so many blogs out there and it's interesting. There's over a million podcasts right now. And that was as, as of April, 2020. But what's interesting about that is podcasting is still in its infancy stages. So yes, there's a million podcasts out there, but there's also a lot more listeners now too, which is great. And so what we're finding is that, um, you know, there, there is a million podcasts, but in the last three days, there's been more than a million blog posts written. So we're still nowhere near the amount of blog posts there are, right. <laughs> there are the amount of blogs there are out there. And so people are coming in in le all different learning styles, right? So there are the people that love reading. There are the people that love listening and there are people that love watching or they're kinesthetic. So people learn in all sorts of different ways. But what we find is the audio listeners, um, they will listen on that. But the great thing about podcasting, as you mentioned, is that we can take our podcast and instead of thinking about it as another marketing thing we have to do <laughs> like we all do right it's like oh gosh another thing like another social media platform well if we think of podcasting as the content creation tool for all of our marketing for the month if you record on zoom like we are right now you get video you get audio you get little snippets of video you can cut up you can get an audiogram out of it you can um you know make that social media posts and quotes and images and you know all your social media content basically the foundation of it for the entire month is covered with a few interviews a month so that's kind of how i like to look at it for our entrepreneurs so it's not as an overwhelming thing that they have to do but as something that like you said is fun and i love doing it too it's one of my most favorite things to do yeah so i have heard some of those statistics uh, as far as how many podcasts um are out there so two things that I've heard, and you can you can um, substantiate whether these are true or not. One is there's a huge statistic, and I couldn't tell you what it was, but the percentage of podcasters that actually are in business consistently producing content six months in or a year in is the numbers go way way down. So consistency is really important, and I and I'm just pr trying to paint the picture that if anybody's thinking about doing a podcast. Um, there's a lot less competition than you might think when you look at the numbers. And then I also saw somewhere a number that said um, the number of new listeners is like four times the number of new podcasts. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more new listeners um, than there are people coming into the podcast space. So I just think that's really encouraging because, you know, I'm a big proponent of the podcast. So a couple yeah. of things you said that I want to follow up on. Um, also, the, all, the average podcast listener listens to over seven shows. So now you take that number, you times it by seven. Now we're looking really good. <laughs> oh, that's, that's right. So, um, 
So one of the things that I want to expound on uh, is what, what you say, because I do a weekly podcast, uh, but then I create sound bites from it. Um, mm-hmm. so, uh, so I'm creating more content, driving more people to it. Uh, the other thing is the power of the guests that you have in their community. Now, it's not always the easiest thing to get them to promote, but if you help them by get, sending them sound bites or sending them little snippets and get, helping them, um, can really get you into their community, which expands your space. The other thing that I've done, and I will just admit right up front, the first time I did it is because um, I I didn't have a podcast coming up. I like I it was a it was a dry spot in my otherwise crazy schedule of interviews, and I was like, what am I going to do this next week? So I decided to do a highlight reel. So I went back to the first four episodes that I'd done, and I took little snippets of it, and I reintroduced the people, which people seemed to really like. It was really fun for me to go back and revisit that. But it also got four people re-engaged in promoting it to their space. Mm, And so I'm getting ready to do another one of those, not because I don't have enough interviews, but because I see it seems to kind of work. So I love that idea um, because I actually just saw someone post a few months ago in um, the She Podcast um, group, which is for women podcasters. And it was about um, the first season of her show. And it was uh, something about the scars we wear. And um, it was just these powerful, like little snippets from every episode that at the end of the two minute reel, you're like, oh my gosh, like I have to go and listen to this show, like just some crazy stories in there. And and so that's such a great idea. And I I love that, um, that little trailer that she made. And so what a great idea that you did that and it got re-engagement. And you're right. I think some people although they should (laughs) promote the episode and tag you in it and all that kind of stuff. I think people uh, forget about doing that sometimes, or if we don't give them the tools to allow them to do that, you know, if we don't give them the content to do it, then it's um, harder for them to do it. Well, and I, and I think it's one of those things where if you're, if you're producing every week, then, you know, I interview you and you're on this week and I, we work together and you pr- promote it. Then I'm on to the next one, the next week and the next one, the next week. And you just kind of fall by the wayside. I'm like, no, I want to re-engage my guests because this is such a powerful tool for them. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of them don't know what to do with it. Like they, yeah, so they and never... I think bringing back those old episodes and re-promoting re- um, them every couple of times um, a month is a great idea too. Like, so you're always got new content because who sees your post on Facebook now probably didn't see them a month ago. Yeah. Um, and you know, just, you know, especially with the way with Facebook is going, it's so hard to keep current on there. See, like I hardly see any of my friends posts on Facebook. Um, just as you have more friends on there, it's hard to see everyone. Yeah. Well, and I, having done it, um, and am doing it, I can definitely see the value of someone like you and your team, coming in and doing the stuff that I don't want to do. I, I mean, I actually didn't think I'd like editing. I really like editing. Um, <laughs> you're, a rare, but, you're a rare one, Jenny. Well, I, I, a lot okay. of people get into the editing and they're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, let me, let me caveat it. Um, I, first of all, I don't do much editing. So I don't go and take out the ums and the dog barks and whatever. So I don't do that. And secondarily, I, I like the creative part of the editing mm-hmm. um, where you get to, record an intro because I do a separate intro and an outro and so um, it's not so much the tediousness of sitting in a computer editing but you know adding the music and adding some other things mm-hmm. that's uh, that's a little bit creative for me so I so I like that um, you talked about people listen to and I'm gonna okay now I'm gonna be selfish again and just be c- complete like disclosure I'm asking you the questions that I want to know so this is really a Janet personal interview not so much okay, for anybody else because what Janet wants to know probably the rest of the world wants to know too <laughs> <laughs> it's okay so you said that um, p- people moanly, mo- moanly, mas- mainly listen to 20 minutes or aver- on average 20 minutes mm-hmm. so I do a 40 plus minute on average podcast. Should I only do a 20 minute podcast? No, because I think, uh, well, it really depends on your audience. So if you, and uh, this is the tricky thing about podcasting is that it's very hard. It's not like YouTube. We cannot see where people drop off like within the episode, right? So, um, you know, there's five minute episodes that are too long. There's two hour ones that are too short. So I think, I think what it is is that you're noticing that there's not as much um, traction to your episodes, then maybe bring them down a little bit more. Or if you feel like an interview is like a little bit of a struggle, then just keep it shorter. 
Um, but I think for the most part, um, if you can convey, like if you, like we are talking about podcasting today and we're keeping very much on topic um, with some entrepreneurs, they might have many things or many things that they're doing. So it might be harder to keep them focused on one topic. You can keep your episode to that what like one kind of takeaway or one topic that makes for a cleaner show and it makes it more um, digestible for your audience too, which I think you do a really great job of that, Janet. And, you know, some of the shows that um, if you're doing a solo show, uh, anyone out there that does those solo shows, keep it, yeah, keep it to some, like one takeaway, something, one, one piece of information, one concept, not like the, the, if you think about a webinar, like the three mistakes and the five ways to change that and blah, 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 that's like, those are like four different episodes. <laughs> right. Right. So kind of keep it tight and keep it focused on one kind of specific thing. Have you seen, what have you seen uh, the changes be because of COVID? So, I mean, we're almost six months into this, at least here in the United States. Um, I've heard, initially, I heard some of the podcasting, uh, direct, not directories, but hosting companies say that because people aren't commuting and people aren't going to the gym, there's been a drop off on listening. What has your experience been? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, actually, Edison just released an article about this this week. Um, and Edison Research is a great tool to find out what's happening in the podcasting space. That's where we get all of our statistics from. They're really the only measurable <laughs> company out there that does any sort of measuring. But uh, what Edison said was that, yes. We lost a lot of listeners due to the commuters that were like religiously listening um, to and from their community. And they don't have those two hours a day anymore uh, at home to listen. But we also gained a lot more listeners that are now trying to work from home. They don't have the office buzz, people around them. Now they're sitting at home working. They're also listening now to podcasts where they don't have that office work environment around them either. Um, and then there was a few other statistics in there that I don't quite remember, but, um, you know, over, I think their the overall, um, takeaway was that yes, the listeners were down, more people are launching shows, but overall there's more list, there's more listeners, but those commuters were down initially. So they think that it's kind of evening it's kind out, of evened out now they're mm -hmm. coming, coming back. And I, I just think, I, I think you're right. I mean, I, in some ways, when I hear people talk about their 15 year old podcast, uh, I'm like, well, I'm, you know, we're on this part of the curve, you know, we're on this part of curve, but I really, I think you're absolutely right. I think there's a lot of people, um, starting podcasts. Um, what would you say? And, and I also think, cause I am a coach, so I know how I know people who start and then never finish. Let me just, I'm trying to, put, trying to yes. put it in a diplomatic way, right? Um, so I suspect that that's a huge thing. I'd love to know if you have any statistics or anecdotal on mm -hmm. um, people who start a podcast and then either don't continue for a length of time or they start to, you know, frequency, they don't stay with this frequency. And, and some thoughts on, on how you avoid the, if there is such thing as podcast fatigue, mm -hmm. um, pod fade, yeah, pod, pod fade. Pod fade. Okay, okay, I knew you there would be a word right. for it. <laughs> it is a real thing, and so there was a statistic that came out last year, and it says if you have 250 downloads per episode, you're in the top 20% of podcasting, which goes to show that a lot of shows do have that pod fade. And so, what typically what we see happen. Um, and you know, we're really strategic about this at the very beginning with our, our podcasters so that this doesn't happen. If you cannot come up with a list of 20 or 30 topics that you're going to talk about right out of the gate, then we haven't, I collect clothes, we haven't peeled the onion back far enough to figure out that maybe that's not your topic. Like maybe it needs to go a little bit deeper. Um, when you can stop talking about that topic, that's when you've got the right topic <laughs> and pod feed won't happen as long as you are consistent. So a few things that made people inconsistent are overachieving. So starting off coming out of the gates as a five day a week show, it's hard to keep that up. And once you start dropping down the episodes, you're going to lose people. Um, also, uh, we actually noticed one of our, one of our clients probably has one of the most popular shows that we manage 
Last Christmas, she decided to take two weeks off without really thinking about it. She could have pre-recorded two episodes, but she didn't. She just took the two weeks off and we watched her numbers drop by thousands over those two weeks. And so it was hard to get back up again after dropping those uh, numbers. So can your listeners are depending on you. I remember when I was a new mom and I first started becoming a podcast listener, I think it really helped pull me out of postpartum depression because I could feel myself going that way of being a busy career woman before and having my own business before to becoming a new mom. I love being a mom, but my business brain was going to mush. And so I really, I turned on the Apple TV and I was so, so excited to see a show, but that show is like eventual millionaire by Jamie Tardy It's still around. I think good. But I, it, I knew it came out Monday morning. So every Monday morning, I'd have my earbuds ready to like, when the episode dropped, we'd go out for a walk and I could listen. Your listeners are going to be behaving in that way too. So if that episode does not drop Monday morning, I would be, I would be upset about that. <laughs> I'd be calling Jamie saying, what's going on with your show? <laughs> so you're going to lose your loyal listeners if you don't be consistent. Um, so I think that those are a couple of things that help. Um, not overachieving with the amount of the downloads you're committing to, I think, or amount of shows you're committing to from the beginning to helps. So I took, actually, since, since I started, I took one week off. Um, and I and I didn't think about, and I so I didn't notice that I have notified people, like, I'm going to take the week off. or And and then, and then I did this other thing. So um, this was just two weeks ago. Um, I was getting ready to... Um, to record, a, 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 to edit, it was Thursday, August 20th, because I actually did a, I did a four minute podcast episode on the, so it was, it was Thursday, August 20th. We had been, it had been 10 days of like over a hundred, it was 112 wow. like heat, right? So we couldn't go outside. Um, then we had fires. So the, you know, you can, can't go, there's smoke and ashes falling from the sky. You know, we've been locked indoors for, you know, five months, six months. And I, I was just like, I can't do it. I, I just can't do it. Um, so I decided to just do a four minute podcast that said, I'm just calling uncle. I can't do it. And I'm just telling, and maybe you're feeling the same way. And I went into you know, some other, like it started out really gloom and doom. And I started to be kind of hope to be a little, you know, inspirational at the end. But I, like, I just, I just called it and said, I, I can't do it. And this is where we are. And I'll be back next week with another great episode. But for today, this is what you get. And, um, but I did take one week off and I, it was a vacation and I didn't even think, and I, and I hope, so hopefully it didn't hurt my numbers, but I should have thought, um, even if you do something like that, even if you do some kind of, oh, it's always better to pre-record, I think episodes, but, um, but that's, that's a good thing to, to know. Um, yeah, it is. And you know, it's one of those things that I think we need to think about podcasting as a long-term strategy, right? It's not an immediate return on our investment. Usually, usually it's going to take a while, but what's cool about podcasting and in our um, loyal listener space is that uh, they're going to be ready to work with you because they're going to know you, like you, trust you. I mean, I can't tell you how many podcasts I've listened to where if I saw them at a conference, I'd want to give go and give them a big hug because I feel like I know them, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's a weird feeling being on the other side. So as entrepreneurs, I think it's our job to then think about um, – it, you know, looking at the numbers and looking about well, thinking about the relationships and not so much about the download numbers and thinking about, you know, how can we move these people into our business? What can we offer them? Can they join the community? You want to reach out and talk to us. So taking the next step. So as a listener, I'm always thinking, how can I, well, how do I get to work with this person or how can I reach out and, and get to more of them? So and when you were saying that your solo episode, because you usually do a lot of um, interviews, so uh, what I, uh, which I want to share with your audience that they might find this really uh, fascinating, is that all of our all of our clients, no matter who show it is, including my own, where I like you, I do mostly interviews. The most popular episodes are always the ones you do on your own. <laughs> Isn't that weird? It is weird. It's weird, but they come for you, <laughs> and that's why they're here is to learn from you. So. I had someone ask me the other day if it was okay if they, you know, maybe they should cut out some of the stuff because they were adding some information in between the questions. I was like, no, I'm like, that's perfect because we're getting to know you too. And that's why they're here is because of you. Well, you know, you mentioned that in our interview. Um, and so I immediately 
have added in, and I think it's now I'm trying to think of like once a month I will do either a Q and A or you know I, I've got a ton of content because I've been coaching for 15 years, and so I might add in just a bit on one, like mindset. I did one of the mm -hmm. one episode because this podcast is all about mindset and I, the entrepreneur mindset, and I'm really fascinated by that. And so I did one that was just me, which was really it made me really uncomfortable. Um, but you inspired me because you said people might resonate with that and look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that's a great thing. And I think it's great to, to mix it up and mix yeah. up the, um, the, because interviews are great, um, but just doing different things. Yeah, so and for our entrepreneur podcasters too, another great thing um, is I always bring on other podcasters on my show and in, in, interview them as podcasters and talk about like what their, you know, our audience of people who are podcasting, but what it invertedly did was a lot of them are clients of ours and it turns into really great testimonials for us. So bringing on your clients to your show is a great idea. Interviewing your clients, asking them what their before and after was. Uh, I think that's also a really great idea. Oh, that's excellent. So you, you mentioned monetization and I know that's the, that's the most overused word in the podcast world. Um, but I know you work with clients on that. Any thought, what are your thoughts on uh, the monetization of a podcast? Yeah, for sure. We come up with a profitable podcaster formula. And basically what that is, is we're taking a look at your business and your podcast and how we can intertwine them together. So instead of chasing the sponsorship and the monetization over here, like the sponsorship and the ads and the, you know, what you hear a lot of on, um, for podcasting, we're taking a look at your business in, in, in total. So where are you sending people from the podcast? How is that working within your business? Is that a going into, um, you know, a direct message? Is it an application to work with you? Is it, uh, a free Facebook group. And one of the things we do in our business is we have a Facebook group called my podcast coach.com. And so when people go into that group, um, we have tons of free training in there. We do Facebook lives all the time and whatever product we're working on, we do it live in that group first before we, we turn it into a paid product. But what we've done is from the podcast and from whatever we're doing, speaking anywhere, we send people to that podcast group. But on upon entry, we ask them, what's your email address? What are you struggling with the most when it comes to podcasting right now? And if we can ma wave a magic wand, what could we help you with um, to immediately help you get more results? Or so anyways, we've crafted a few questions in there. So now it's super interesting because we thought we were going to attract, we thought we were talking to this kind of people over here when actually coming through our podcast uh, group, we find out, oh my gosh, we have all these people here. So we thought we were talking to people who already had shows when actually coming through with those Facebook group is people that don't have a show yet. So it's interesting because now, because I know that information, we can tailor what we're doing to that. If I didn't know that information, I'd be trying to sell them, you know, dimes when they want pennies. And right. it's not like, the, not the same sort of thing. So um, yeah, that's a really valuable way to get to know your podcast audience because I know sometimes you're out there talking and you feel like you're talking to, <laughs> there's no feedback because you don't know who you're talking to. So I think that was a really valuable way of moving people into the next step of working with you. So uh, some, anybody listening to this podcast, if they wanted to work with you or find out more about what you do, would my podcast group? Where would be the best place for them to go? Yeah, that's the first place to go to our Facebook group. You can join the Facebook group. And then also I have a bunch of gifts that I can give away as well. So mypodcastcoach.com forward slash gifts. There's two gifts there. One is a really cool monetization guide um, that my co-founder of my podcast coach, Evans Putman, has, has put together. He is worked in a podcast uh, that was making half a million dollars in reoccurring revenue from it. And it was also sold for six figures. So he's got a lot of expertise in monetizing. We have this little joke. He's the monetizer and I'm the optimizer. <laughs> so um, my job is to help you make sure you have a well-oiled machine is bringing leads back into your business. We do the management of the show and everything. And then he really helps with the strategy of the monetization. That's why we work together as a team. And so um, the other gift there is the seven places that um, podcasters look for guests. So if you're looking, you're thinking about podcasting. So if you're out there listening to this episode and you're like, I think I want to be, I want to do podcasting, but I'm not sure about my own show, go out and be a guest first because it's kind of like thinking about how backlinking used to work back in the day with websites where 
you get a link on your site and they get a link on theirs that connected you. Well, now podcasting, you're going out and being interviewed on all these different shows and then you're having all those shows coming back to you. So I think that's a really valuable way of being able to um, bring people back into your business. And going back to your monetization question, Janet, you know, um, your own programs, own programs and services, that is the best way to monetize your podcast because you have so many different uh, levels of offers you can make. We've seen people do it from selling their book in the parenting space to a $10,000 coaching program. You know, those those are going to take a year of them listening to you before they're ready to invest in that. But when they're ready, they're ready, right? So we've seen all sorts of different things from a $27 offer to a free offer. And um, my last gift for you guys is also at mypodcastcoach.com forward slash private. And what that one is going to give you is that right now we're kind of, we've been doing a little bit of research lately, Evans and I, and we've realized that if you have a podcast and you're sending people to a PDF or you're sending them to a video, they're already on, they're listening. So it's a different medium. So if you can send them to something on audio, then they're going to, then they're on their phone already. It's a lot easier for them to consume that content because it's on audio. So we've created a program that's called five ways that you can use private audio to make more money and get more listeners in your podcasts. And it's free. And it's at that link I gave you, uh, mypodcastcoach.com forward slash private. And what it's going to do is when you opt in for it, it's going to say, where do you want to listen to this on Google, Spotify, or Apple, where you're already listening to your podcast. And it's going to look exactly like a podcast. It's going to show up in your podcast episodes um, but it's private and you can't share it with anybody and it's a it's a unique link for you oh that's excellent I, i'm going to go check out those myself <laughs> so um my podcast coach slash gifts gifts my yeah. podcast and then, coach slash private private yeah two links right, there, yeah. perfect um so the other question i oh i have a couple more questions um mm -hmm. should a podcaster also do video and um, publish on YouTube and why? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, uh, personal preference, but if the whole reason you're trying to do this is to gain more exposure, get more leads, I would not leave out the multi-million dollar platform of YouTube. <laughs> so uh, there's two different ways you can do your podcast on there. You can actually literally put your audio podcast onto, um, onto YouTube and, and um, like Libsyn actually does that automatically for you if you're using Libsyn as a host. Um, the what you would do, what it would look like is just your podcast cover as a video, and then it would play your um, show in the background. The other option is to create a nice intro on video, then you have your video format, and that goes that goes better. You're going to get more downloads. But one thing I would do is change the title. Um, titles are very literal and searchable on YouTube where podcasting the actual episode titles don't really matter, but the overall podcast title matters. So like Janet Ears is very searchable with Breakaway Entrepreneur, right? It's very searchable. Um, Entrepreneur is very searchable. So, but then when you're putting the episodes on YouTube, each, each episode should be renamed into something that's like uh, searchable keywords as well. Okay, that's. I'm not a YouTube expert, but that's what I know about YouTube. <laughs> so, you, so now you just gave me a whole another four whole hours project of, to do. Sorry. Four hours work to go change it because I <laughs> use the name of the podcast as the name of the episode. So anyway, good. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. You'll to get more. Re yeah, you'll just get more reach if you change it up to the what's some of the content in there. That's searchable you, keywords. Then, yeah, and then publish your show notes also on YouTube as well and your show notes should have some searchable content in it too. Yeah. And that will help with your SEO. Excellent. That, that's excellent. Um, what else was I going to ask you? Oh, so you, like you said, you're, you're somewhat unique. You live off the grid. This is kind of, um, and I sent you a whole bunch of questions that we didn't even talk about. So I will get back and this will be my final, final question. Um, talk about your experience as an entrepreneur. You have, a very unique level of freedom that you live with or under or whatever. So talk a little bit about your experience and then what got you to living like the most freedom life, mm -hmm. I don't know, possible, but it's pretty, yeah. you pick and choose where you live and that's pretty darn cool. I'd like to hear more about that journey. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it started off like 
when I was sitting in an office and I had this amazing job right after I went to outdoor rec for school, of course, because it was bought in my, my 20s. You know, I, it actually started with a tragedy. My, my, I was backpacking through Europe with two best friends and one of them was killed by a train. And so I use this in my stories because her life was cut off just like that at 19 and she had a story to share that she's not going to get to share. So that sent my life on a trajectory that's different than most people's where uh, the American dream, Canadian dream, go get a job, go to school, blah, 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 blah. That's, I looked at that one day in a networking event. I saw a screen pop up and said this was the American Canadian dream. And I was like, not for me. Like, that's crazy. So um, I started doing my whole goal in my 20s was to get paid to play. So <laughs> I worked in cruise ships and adventure tourism resorts, ski resorts, like all over the world. There's a nanny and au pair in Switzerland. We backpacked in Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, backpacked in Europe and just drove across Canada with my girlfriends and just had a lot of fun in my 20s. And, um, and then uh, had a gym. So I was, so I was sitting and I was working in a ski resort for a ski company where every weekend we were taking people away on vacation skiing near corporations or universities and colleges. And it was a lot of fun. But I wasn't really contributing anything to society. I was just, you know, having a lot of fun on the weekends with people. And so I wanted to become a personal trainer, I was really into fitness and, and wellness. And so I built a gym and then I had seven boot camp locations across our province. And uh, I built that business and I really got into the marketing of it. But the longer I was in the fitness industry, the more out of shape I got. Because the less time I got to spend working out like I wanted to. So um, I loved that business. I had a lot of fun. But when I became a mom, I was like, that's not a sustainable career anymore for me. And I really fell in love with the marketing. And so I opened a co-working space outside of Vancouver and it was the first co-working space in the um, outside of the downtown area back in like 2013. And uh, it was a little ahead of its time, but it allowed me to help entrepreneurs leverage their time, make more money. We used to do that through podcasting, um, writing books and publishing books and online courses. So it's to help people do all those sort of things. And so I've been doing that since then for the last seven or eight, eight, seven years or so. Um, but we've just narrowed our focus in the last three years to just podcasting. And since we narrowed our focus, our businesses obviously got, it was the right timing for podcasting. And um, we've done a lot of, a lot of great things, but my husband and I, every weekend, um, his family has a cabin on the Sunshine Coast, which is where everyone goes on vacation from the Lower Mainline in, in Vancouver. And so we were going up there every weekend and we bought a house in the suburbs my husband was commuting in his job like three hours a day. And while I was out here enjoying my life and having so much fun and traveling everywhere, uh, I didn't know him at the time, but he was, he'd worked 18 years straight, like straight from grade 11 on <laughs> and um, didn't get to have a lot of fun in his life. Um, at other he's at work so much. And so he was starting to become not happy with work and commuting three hours a day. And you talked about moving up to this, this place where his parents had this property and, um, we talked about it and talked about it. And then the universe one day, we just slapped us across the face and said, do it. We got a flood in our house <laughs> and we had to move out of our house for six weeks. Well, right, we said, hey, why don't we just see what happens in the market? And we'll put our house for sale and see if we can do this. And we had a, a four-year-old and a two-year-old at the time and we sold our house and we moved up to the Sunshine Coast. So in perspective, it's like uh, an hour ferry ride and then an hour drive and then a 10 minute um, trip across the lake. So it's not super far away. It's a great way we, we can get away, but still far enough away from everyone. <laughs> and so we moved there and we haven't been happier. We love living there. It's great. It was sitting empty nine months of the year. And so now his parents just come and stay with us at their vacation home uh, in the summer. And it's really great. And the kids get to go to school by a, school, by a boat and um, we're able to run. He was able to retire quit his business and now he uh, fixes boats on the lake and has made his own little business up there and it's really awesome and thanks to podcasting um, our first winter um, that we moved there we weren't sure if the kids were so little how it was going to be going across the lake so we uh, I had this idea for a podcast um, but I wanted to go RVing but we'd never been in an RV before I didn't know anyone in the RV space didn't have any <laughs> any business in the RVs at all um, but we know we wanted to go RVing. So I created an RV summit, an RV family summit, and invited 25 experts to come be interviewed on the summit. And then we recorded a bit for a podcast too. And so we had a podcast and then we had the summit and then we had the summit recordings and I made enough money doing that uh, summit that it paid for our RV 
and we spent five months going from Vancouver all through California and Nevada, Arizona and stuff with our kids. And that was three years ago now. And the kids talk about it like every weekly. So like they just, it was the best thing ever for them. It was super fun. Well, that's great. I mean, that's the epitome of, of what freedom. And I'm, I'm all about freedom, living where you want to live, doing what you love to do, doing it with the people that you love to do it. What a great story. Michelle, you are so fabulous. Is there anything else you want to share uh, with the listeners before we end our conversation sure. today? Yeah, thank you so much, Janet, for having me. This has been super fun. And I know your listeners out there were thinking, should I start a podcast? Should I not start a podcast? And you know what I'm going to say to that is that um, Google has some things up their sleeve right now that if you do not have a podcast in the next few years, um, you're going to be left behind. And I mean that in the more of a sense of like SEO and searchability, it's going to be even more important to have a podcast than it is to have a website. So this is how your customers are now consuming content. And this is how they're going to find you. They're actually indexing podcasts, individual episodes, higher than your own website, higher than YouTube videos. So we're just at the beginning of this. Still podcasting is in its infancy stages. And so I think just grab your own platform start talking, enjoy it, start building relationships, use it as a networking tool to meet other people. And like Jen and I both say, it's our most favorite activity in our business. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, right? And, well, and um, you yeah. get to meet like cool people. Like I, yeah. I, I met you on a Zoom call mm -hmm. and I'm like, and you invited me on your, and I'm like, great, come on mine. And now we mm -hmm. have this little article slash, I don't know if it'll be a book, but we got this idea, we're gonna Super share funny. that. And we'll stay in touch and yeah. I'll send clients to you and you'll send and clients to me. Is, yeah. I mean, this is, it's not just about reaching the outside audience. It's reaching, you know, a, it's, an inside I, I audience. I said this on an interview this morning too. It's about finding your joint venture and collaboration partners too, or the people you're interviewing. So that's the fastest way to grow your business is finding partners that will also promote you. So getting with those people that have the same audience, but offer something completely different than you do and interviewing them and getting into in front of them and being in their world um, is going to just like, you're going to see it tenfold back in your business and that ROI is going to happen faster than you can imagine. So, I mean, I wouldn't be anywhere without these kind of networking um, experiences in my business. And when a world has shut down completely, the people that have adopted this, uh, their businesses have grown <laughs> over yeah. this period of time, right? Well, and one of the biggest um, challenges that I find with my clients, and I experience it myself, you know, I'm a solo entrepreneur. I don't have, a, you know, I have, I have people who do certain things for me that are contracts, but I don't have a office even if I before COVID but I it can be a very lonely place to be an entrepreneur and that's mm -hmm. why I do a bunch of group coaching that brings people together but it can be a very lonely place it's hard to be lonely when you're even though we're doing it via zoom I started mm -hmm. out podcasting doing interviews in my kitchen table which was fun yeah. <laughs> um but it, it this it, it's about a community and it's about yeah. joint ventures and 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 that can fill a big a big space for people and mm -hmm. and so well I mean that's one of those intangible not thought about benefits of getting involved in a community like podcasting but for me it's been a huge one that's awesome yeah and, and the podcasting community is growing so fast but it's also one of the friendliest nicest and most collaborative communities I've ever been involved in Awesome. Yeah. All right, Michelle, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate you. We'll be in touch because we're going to make yeah. that thing happen. Absolutely. And for those of you that are like left in suspense, it's about the funny things that happen when you're recording on Zoom. <laughs> I think we called it awkward moments. Awkward in moments. Yes, we've got so, a lot of those between us. <laughs> so we do. We absolutely do. I've awesome. added a couple since our last, uh, since our conversation <laughs> from my experience of you know, people walking around with their, anyway, we won't, I won't, I won't <laughs> we'll tell you there. Well, you'll have to wait till it comes out. <laughs> That's right. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for having me. Take All care. All right. Thanks, everyone. Michelle. Thank you for listening to the Breakaway Entrepreneur with Janet Fish. If you're an entrepreneur who wants to take your business to the next level and you don't want to do it alone, I invite you to apply for a free strategy session with me. We'll get on the phone and talk about where you are and where you want to go. I've coached over a thousand people over the last 15 years. I'm confident you'll leave the call with at least one thing you can do immediately to grow your business. So if you're interested, email me at coach at breakawaybusinesscoaching.com. There's also more information on it in the show notes. So until next week, 
Make it a great day. 